Hi everyone, welcome to Beyond Tomorrow, a new series from the New Zealand Herald in partnership with MYOB, where we tackle the unprecedented business environment affecting thousands of small and medium-sized enterprises across New Zealand as the world battles to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus. I'm Will Trafford and every day I'm joined by Ingrid Cronin-Knight, MYOB's country manager, and today our guest, Olivia Storm, a psychiatry registrar at the SMILE initiative. That intro probably gives you a hint about today's topic. We are confronting something that will affect one in three small and medium-sized business owners, regardless of what sector they trade in. And it is, of course, mental health. Olivia, mental health was a major issue for small business and medium business owners, as it is in COVID-19 world. This must add some serious weight to people's you know, burden. Well, I think, well, one of, one of the concerns is that, as you said, one in three small to medium business owners are talking about having some sort of mental distress or having some sort of brush with mental health, um, which is significantly higher than the one in five Kiwis that we usually see in the general population. And I think having a business, particularly startups and the small to medium area, you've already got that stress of trying to set up your own business and all the financial burden and uncertainty that comes from that. I think that then having a global pandemic on top of that and then furthermore having a lockdown in which you can't access your means in lots of situations, um, I think that's just um, a real recipe for intense amounts of uncertainty and emotional distress essentially. And so obviously none of us are surprised that people are feeling like this, um, but obviously um, our SME um, people are, are in what I would call a vulnerable population at the, at the current stage, yeah. Ingrid, uh, your business, I guess, is speaking to tons of small business and medium business owners at the moment. Um, is this one of the big themes that's coming through? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, if you only just go back two weeks ago, um, people had a lot more certainty about what their business was. And, you know, and small business owners are pretty you know, brave and resilient types of people where they deal with lots of lots of um, stresses and pressures on any given day. But, uh, you, you, you know, you take them out um, of the office and then you reduce the demand for a lot of them where they can't actually get customers or actually, you know, pay their bills. You give them a lot of uncertainty about when is this going to cut, you know, cut down? Can I actually pay my staff? Can I keep them on board? Um, you know, in the, in the midterm, uh, you know, they're really under the pressure. And, and, um, and so it's just great. I think that we can have this particular session, um, you know, to really give them some practical tips around how they might, you know, look to, to, to put in some coping strategies to take that pressure off. Yeah, I guess when we should talk about those coping uh, strategies. Olivia, you've got some stats here that talk about the fact that we're talking about about 59% of, of small business owners talking about depression of, of the people who've had these mental health issues. Another 41% anxiety. What's the significance of the breakup? It's quite un common to have depression without any form of anxiety and vice versa. Um, but I, I think those statistics are profound um, and concerning in a lot of respects in that um, if you're having close to 60% of people experiencing depressive symptoms, um, one, we need to be getting help to these people, and two, we need to be providing as much care as we can in terms of coping strategies um, to sort of make sure that these people are, are seeing through the lockdown and are coming out in one piece at the end, um, even if their business isn't. One of the things I wonder, Olivia, is um, small and medium-sized business leaders are often quite entrepreneurial people and they're quite fiercely independent people. That's how they've got to where they've got. How do you identify if you're one of these people, if you're one of the people struggling? I suppose I tell people that nobody knows you better than you. But the biggest trick that comes out of that is often we have a very big blind spot when it comes to being able to identify our own early warning signs and our own concerns around our mental health until it gets to a point that actually we're at breaking point. Um, I feel that most of us have a pretty good idea of what we can and can't tolerate, um, but it's just that there are a couple of signs and symptoms of things that people perhaps don't look for and kind of consider normal until they realize it's actually not. 
Um, your type A personalities, the people that are really um, typically very resilient but really strive and are perfectionists, those are people that um, particularly have what we call an internal locus of control in which they blame themselves for their failures um, as well as attributing their successes, but they tend to very much focus on their failures and they tend to be the people at really high risk of, of falling into depressive illnesses or just to becoming um, not themselves and not well. Well, Olivia, one of the big things I guess we're all dealing with at the moment is working from home. I wonder if you've got some tips for us on how to deal with, you know, the situation of being at home. Maybe you've got the partner and the kids around. Um, one, I'm really, really big on making sure that there are things like routine, particularly with um, businesses and making sure that you're still working from home um, and really sticking to that. Um, the way that I slogan it is that you need to be have routine, but with a little bit um, of mixing it up. You can't have the same black and white every single day, otherwise you'll get bored and you'll chuck it out the window on day three because it doesn't stimulate you. And we know that entrepreneurs are people that have high drive, high passion, and love that sort of um, rush of being able to do something that's really risky, but really, really rewarding. So asking people like that to do something really boring and mundane day in, day out for this four weeks is kind of a big ask. So mixing it up is really important. Um, but the other thing is just being really open around communication. It will be hectic having kids at home. Um, it will not be ideal. Um, having your partner in your own space as much as you love them, it's seriously a good test of pe people's marriages and relationships. Um, but being really you know, open. Lose a relationship and a small business. Absolutely. And managing them all at the same time is in a lot of ways unrealistic. And I think just being kind to yourself and kind to others and making sure that you're communicating your concerns and stepping away when you need to um, are things that we all know we should do, but we often don't do it. So it's just about keeping yourself in check. And the other note that you've got here, which I really like, is talking about the flexibility. Maybe if you're a, a, a small business owner or that kind of thing, understanding that obviously some of your employees have got kids, parents, you know, partners, all this kind of thing um, at home as well. And if you're maybe one of those business leaders that's very driven and motivated, particularly entrepreneurial, maybe having that Zoom meeting running all 10 hours of the day so you can keep an eye on your employees, possibly not that helpful for their mind or your own. No. I think this is a really massive time um, of learning to trust and let go a little bit, um, which I think for people that have created and are running their own businesses, I think that's probably going to be very difficult. Um, but learning to let go a little bit, um, I don't mean completely letting go, um, but kind of trusting that this is going to pass this is temporary and people need to keep reminding themselves of this. Um, this is going to be a finite period of time that we are in lockdown, whether or not it's extended or not, it still will be finite. Um, and that things, things are temporary and keeping an eye on your employees and keeping yourself um, accountable to every tiny little mistake that happens during this period. Um, it's just not productive and it's going to result in you feeling really rubbish and that's not what we want at all. Can we talk a little bit about personal mental health? How, how on earth do you deal with this as, as an individual? Perhaps like we talked about before, someone may be not that interested in asking for help and maybe not that interested in recognising they're really going through through something pretty epic. Mm. The, um, the New Zealand government, um, in conjunction with All Right, which was the company that did a lot of the um, post-Christchurch earthquake um, mental health content, have launched a campaign today called Get Through Together. Um, and they have lots of really, really good tips, as does the Mental Health Foundation. Um, the Smile Initiative, um, which is us, um, we have very similar um, tips and tools um, in regards to ensuring that you stay connected um, and kind of viewing it that we are you know, there is distance between us, but we're not distant. Um, we are in isolation, but we're not isolated. And that we need to keep connecting with people um, and we need to keep ensuring that we're having meaningful connections with other people. Because as humans, it's one of our most basic needs to have an understanding of our own sense of purpose and um, have motivation to continue. Um, that one's really important. Um, another thing that I think is is we all know that we should do, but we don't do, um, is switching it off. And that's switching off social media, um, the telly, uh, your phone. It, 
not all the time, um, but you, there needs to be ideas around. I mean, the statistics say that we check in New Zealand, we check our phone 150 times a day, each person, um, whether or not it's ringing or vibrating or anything. We just check on it. And you don't need that. That's an additional layer of stress and anxiety. If you want to get information about COVID, there are official channels to go through. You don't need to be. There's so much misinformation out there that just heightens your anxiety um, instead of alleviating it. Um, you can, you know, have certain periods of time where you're off your phone. Um, there's really good evidence to say that one in three people actually feel significantly worse after going on social media. Um, so just making sure that you're looking at things that are going to increase your positivity um, rather than make you feel worse than usual. Ingrid, do you think we're doing enough in the business community to maybe encourage our business leaders to, to reach out and, and, and go to some of these services and, and start talking? In reality, they're time poor. You know, they've got a lot of obligations on them. They've got, they're serving their clients. Uh, uh, they're negotiating deals in the background and then they're making sure they've got enough money to pay their people. Uh, and I think, you know, our, our, it was our research that you were quoting before around um, that one in three of them have found um, that they've had a mental health concern. And I, I guess what we find is that they end up being time poor and so they end up skipping meals. They end up um, having poor sleep uh, and it just creates a, a you know, a, a vicious circle. Uh, in terms of how do you intergene with that, I think, I think you know, it's around in the moments of need when they can reach out and then encouraging and having a, a, a empathetic ears. They, they tend to network amongst themselves well. Mm -hmm. And so I think if they can provide, um, you know, mutual support and recognise those signs, uh, you, know, you know, at the same time, you know, we've heard feedback that there's just so many sources of information at the moment and it's a bit of overwhelm yeah. as well. And so you need to, as a business owner, I think, you know, trust your gut. You know, you know you've know, you raised this business. It's your, you know, your creativity that's got it to where it is. And so I think, um, you know, being kind to yourself more than anything in that business, but trusting your gut and reaching out to the people that you do have those networks with. I, th I think what you said there was actually so good and in, in that you're saying that don't take it personally I think that for a lot of people their business is you know their baby they've 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 created it they've grown it they've watched it flourish they've walked alongside it but there has to we have to be real in that we say that there has to you have to be able to dissociate yourself personally and your own self-worth from the business if the business doesn't isn't able to survive that which devastating as that is but that doesn't mean that this is a personal failure and people as much as that is difficult to do dissociating the business you know going under or you know not doing as well or having some hiccups that's a no means or no reflection of who you are as a person and people often click them together a lot um, and I think it's important in this time when a lot of people are finding it really difficult just to tease those apart a little bit so people are still left with their self-worth intact um, because that's kind of where you get the people that begin to feel really low in their mood um, and go down from that. If, if someone's watching this and they may not actually be the, the, the leader themselves, this might be a partner, a husband, a wife, that sort of thing, identifying some, some, some mental health issues there perhaps with, with the business leader, what do you do? How, how, how is it best to go to someone who might be fiercely independent and try and help them out? The two best things that you can do are be honest and actually have that conversation. Um, and I say them flippantly as if they're easy, but they're not. Um, but you, you know your loved one better than any of our GPs, people like myself. Um, we, you know, you having that conversation with them, knowing them better will be much better and you'll be able to have a better rapport and be able to get more out of them than we will. Um, and I think that it's so important to actually have that conversation um, even though it is uncomfortable it is awkward um, all of us even if we're trained still don't like having those conversations with our loved ones but it's a time where honesty is literally the only policy um, not just the best you know we have to ask are you okay I've noticed that you're not doing well or do you think that you have any concerns um, some people will completely disregard what you've said but asking them if they're okay um, and just reminding them even if they do completely reject your attempts just reminding them that there is help and that a lot of us are struggling 
and by a lot I mean most of us um, and that it's all right not to be okay and that you're there for them and that they can come to you whenever and just making yourself available um, but there's lots and lots of like um, text lines, helplines. There's heaps of places that you can call. Um, 1737, you can text or call 24 7. There's a counselor available. Um, you can text help to 4357 is another really good one. Um, Lifelines, Samaritans, there's heaps of people available. Um, all our crisis lines for mental health in New Zealand are still running. Um, there's heaps of help out there. We haven't stopped working. We're still there for people. I wonder if. I, I can sort of appeal to you, Olivia, to talk to someone who might be in a very bad space right now as a result of, you know, no fault of their own. Their business is looking in very bad shape. They maybe aren't going to make payroll. They maybe aren't going to be able to pay the bills that have come in and, and they're looking at doing, you know, something very silly or, or a, a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Yeah. I see people like this all the time. Um, and my answer first and foremost is it will get better. It, you're not always going to feel like this. This too shall pass. Even in the darkest times, no matter how bad this feels, this will be temporary and there are always other solutions to being able to get out of this situation even if they are not obvious to you now, there is so much that goes on in the background. There are so many supports and services available that you may not know about. And the first thing that you can do is ask for help because people will help. And if the first person that you talk to does not help, there will be other people waiting in the wings. And I think it, just reminding people that it will be temporary and that it does feel very, very shit at the moment. Um, and it's okay to feel not okay at all. Um, and many of us don't feel okay. Um, but the only way that we as a country are going to get through this is together. I guess some of the thing that, that kind of hits home um, to me, Ingrid, is it's a lot of people that are watching this maybe won't have been around for like the 2008 financial crisis yeah. and all the pain that those businesses went through. But so many bounced back from, right? And, and during that crisis, people were in... Um, horrendous shape and they, and they were so worried about you know what next what happens next to my business and sure enough the sun did rise tomorrow and 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 we got you know we we got into a better place where the stock markets flew through the roof and new zealand's had an amazing period of economic growth yeah, it certainly has and uh, you know from the rock star economy kind of quotes i think um you know, one of the things that we encourage people to do is not just um, plan for the current scenario and how, ha you know, perhaps you can get access to finance to, to help you, you know, finance this sort of working capital issue. Um, and, and, you know, the government and their subsidies is, is helping that. But it's also plan for what's going to happen at alert level three and alert level two. Uh, and then think about in those dimensions, you know, who can, you, you know, how can you actually execute activity then? Will you have new customers? Do you still need to... Um, you know, get your inventory in if you're supplying them. How are you going to make it work at that moment when it actually is going to us? I think having a, a plan for, um, you know, the future is, is really critical. And to tack on the end of that, what we know is that um, one of the stress hormones, cortisol, which is in our bloodstream, um, particularly when we're stressed or when we're highly anxious, um, there is really good data to say that 20 minutes of sort of moderate exercise, um, particularly in nature, um, can reduce your cortisol levels by up to 20% within about 20 or 30 minutes of just doing mild to moderate exercise. So if you're feeling that tense, there's got to be other ways of dealing with it. You know, go out, move away from the situation, have a laugh, put a silly background on the back of your Zoom, like any exactly what you're saying, Ingrid. Like there's other ways to try and laugh without being insensitive to the situation. Hey, um, Olivia, I wonder, run us through again where, we can, where, where people can get help. So you can call or text 1737-247 um, anytime. Um, you can also text, they've just said HELP, H-E-L-P, to 4357, which is the new one that they've released today. Um, you can call Lifeline on 0800-543-354 and the Mental Health Foundation and a number of other um, places like Like Minds Like Mine. Um, and the Smile Initiative has a number of um, resources that you can tap into or you can call um, and are good helplines that you can go through. 
we have Ingrid Cronin, I MYOB's country manager, and uh, Olivia Storm, a psychiatry registrar at the Smile Initiative. Thanks so much for all this really helpful advice. Now remember, we want your questions over the coming days. We're talking about things like taxes around the government stimulus package, but really anything else uh, you want to ask about. We've got a business coach uh, going to have a yarn with us on Zoom here as well. So uh, make sure you get your questions to video at nzherald.co.nz. But as I said before, team, thank you so much. A really um, enlightening and uh, interesting conversation. Cool. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks for having us.